there is one idea that surfaces again and again. Recycled ad nauseum on websites and in culture war books. Assuring us that Halloween is pagan. It originates from James Fraser's turn-of-the-century work. The Golden Bough, A Study in Magic and Religion. Or A Study in Comparative Religion as the first version read. Listen to what Fraser wrote in Part 7 of Volume 1. The Halloween Fires. The principal fire festivals of the Celts, which have survived, though in restricted area and with diminished pomp, to modern times, they were two in number, and fell at an interval of six months, one being celebrated on the eve of May Day and the other on All Hallow Even or Halloween, as it is now commonly called, that is, on the 31st of October, the day preceding All Saints or All Hallows Day, and of the Feast of All Souls at the beginning of November which under a thin Christian cloak conceals an ancient pagan festival of the dead, Halloween, the night which marks the transition from autumn to winter, seems to have been of old the time of year when the souls of the departed were supposed to revisit their old homes in order to warm themselves by the fire and to comfort themselves with the good cheer provided for them in the kitchen or the parlor by their affectionate kinsfolk. But it is not only the souls of the departed who are supposed to be hovering unseen on the day, when autumn to winter resigns the pale year. Witches then speed on their errands of mischief, some sweeping through the air on besoms, others galloping along the roads on dabacats, which for that evening are turned into coal-black steeds. The fairies, too, are all let loose, and hobgoblins of every sort roam freely about. Sound familiar? Halloween is the ancient pagan festival of the dead. The liminal night when the dead walk, when the witches ride, when the goblins roam. Too bad Fraser was mostly wrong. As Cambridge historian Mary Beard has written. A large proportion of the golden bough is inadequate. As well as irrelevant and, at least in the third edition, monstrously prolix by unreasonable standards of accuracy. Too bad Fraser's argument was also rooted in contemporary ideas about the illusion of religion. As E. E. Evans Pritchard described, all the leading sociologists and anthropologists contemporaneous with, or since, Fraser were agnostics and positivists. And if they discussed religion they treated it as superstition for which some scientific explanation was required and could be supplied. Almost all the leading anthropologists of my own generation would believe, that religious faith is total illusion, a curious phenomenon soon to become extinct. Timothy Larson, in his book, The Slain God, Anthropologists and the Christian Faith, writes of the irony of the Golden Bough. Its theory rejected by scholars yet embraced by the public. Fraser's work is generally, if not universally, dismissed today by anthropologists, but they are nonetheless saddled with the reality that the Golden Bough is the most popular and influential book in the history of the discipline in terms of its wider cultural impact. Fraser wrapped his tale about Halloween within his larger theory about the progression of human society. From a world of magic to a world of religion to finally a world of science. Modern religious beliefs like Christianity were born in magic paganism. As he wrote in a 1904 letter to Henry Jackson, the facts of comparative religion appear to me subversive of Christian theology. Fraser's anthropological arguments, including those about the Halloween fires, had a clear agenda, to undermine religious belief. As Larson writes, Fraser frequently made statements to the effect that anthropology was a reformer's science. That the material he was presenting should prompt people to seek actively to discard those parts of their thinking. And culture that he had exposed as arising from faulty logic. Reading the Golden Bough should inspire Christians to abandon faith and replace it with science. Why? Because religion inspires violence. Fundamental to Fraser's work, continues Larson, is the conviction that the reason why some of the foundational timbers of culture are rotten is because they are soaked in blood. J. G. Fraser viewed much of Western popular culture as thoroughly intertwined with religion. He viewed religion as inherently drawn to violence and he viewed such violence as typified by a universal impulse in the religious frame of mind toward human sacrifice. The Golden Bough is relentless in this regard. Fraser argues that the Jewish Passover was really a ritual of human sacrifice. The use of a lamb is a modified survival of something much more awful. 
it is a sly substitution which dupes the bloodthirsty but nearsighted deity. As for Christianity, Fraser speculates, Christmas was once a festival in which a man was sacrificed in the character of the Yule Boar. Fraser warns that this taste for blood and sacrifice, encouraged by modern religions shaped by their pagan pasts, is so strong that it must be intentionally cut away. Religion will not just naturally die on the vine. It must be purposefully rooted out. In short, James Fraser wrote The Golden Bough to help push society into its final stage of maturity, replacing religion with science. Yet it is The Golden Bough, that most popular and influential book on which modern critiques of Halloween and other holidays continue to build. As Philip Jenkins has written about the impact of the Golden Bough, still more damaging were claims that key beliefs of Christianity paralleled or plagiarized the common myths of the Middle East, especially those of a dying and rising God. If you follow the comment sections on religious blogs today, it is amazing to see how many commentators still recycle these hoary and long discredited arguments of early 20th century rationalism. Sir James Fraser's Golden Bough has a lot to answer for. Doesn't it seem ironic that Fraser's attempt to discredit Christianity has become whether knowingly or not a primary resource used by Christians to discredit so-called pagan holidays like Halloween? It certainly does to me.